I'm going to run through a little bit of the programming capabilities. Now it is a very basic scientific calculator, so the programming is, well, it's very basic too. And in my mind, leaves a lot to be desired, but we'll go ahead and start. So we're going to use this example again. We have the area of a circle is pi r squared, and we want to calculate the area for a whole bunch of different circles. So we're going to enter a program, basically a series of keystrokes that will calculate that for us. So to go to our program space, do shift program, and then I'm going to clear what's currently in memory. First, I'm going to start with a label. You don't have to, but if you have multiple programs, you're going to have to set them by, separate them by labels. So I'm going to go shift and uh, label, and then it is waiting for an input. That's another thing that I find a little bit confusing about this calculator, is it doesn't give you any indication that it's waiting for an input here, but it is. So A, that's my label A. Then I'm going to take what's in the, what I've entered in the register and square it first. So that'll be my radius. So I'm just going to square it. It knows that I'm going to square what's in the register. This is algebraic, not RPN. So I'm going to multiply that by pi. And I'm going to say equals to get my answer. And then I'm going to do shift return to go back up to the label A. To get out of it, if you hit C, it will actually enter that as another program step, so we don't want that. But to get out of it, I'm going to shift program again. All right, so there's two ways I can go to the top of that uh, program space. I can do shift, go to, and again, it's actually waiting for input, so I do a double dot. So that brought me back to the top of my program space. And then I can enter in something into the register, and if I hit run stop, it will run through that program space. And that gives me my answer. The area of a circle of radius 5 is 78.54. Or I could put in 5 and then execute label A, because we called it label A in our program space. We could go back to that programming area, scroll up here, go to the bottom, and this time we could insert a label B. Um, label B. And let's say we just want to take the square root of this number. We're going to take square root, and that should be it, since that's only a one button operation. We don't have to do the equal sign. So return, and then we go back. Uh, out of our program space. So here, since I've got two programs listed in there, I do go to double dot, and I'm at the top of that program space, the top of A, and I do five, and I do run stop. Uh, it does go through, since I have the return, it does go through the top, and it goes back up to uh, A. Or I can say go to B, Enter in 5, do run stop, and it takes the square root of 5. Or, again, I can do 5, execute B, and it will just execute B. Or 5, execute A, and it just executes the A program. Now the bad thing about this is these programs that I've entered, if I go into my program space, and then I load one of the built-in programs, so say I want to load the root finder. Well, guess what? Now, label A is something different. It is the program for the root finder. My two programs that I entered are gone. I loaded the system program. It loads those into the program space. So if I want those programs back, I have to type them back in. <coughs> So that's one of the real weaknesses in my mind of this uh, programming. If you want to use any of the built-in programs, um, let me see. So that's the root finder. I think you have uh, numerical integration. You have a complex operations uh, program, three by three matrix operations, quadratic equation, and curve fitting. 
So if you use any of those six programs, any programs that you've written are gone.